Guys, what's going on? Welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath, and I believe this is the first ever Serial at Midnight crossover video. Um, I was talking to my friend Cameron, uh, who is the brains behind Obnoxious and Anonymous, which is a website, YouTube channel, um, media entity, Obnoxious and Anonymous, posts lots of uh, news stories um, all day, every day. And then his YouTube channel is, uh, uh, there's a lot of Twin Peaks stuff. So if you love Twin Peaks and you're not following the Obnoxious and Anonymous YouTube page, I would highly encourage you to do so. But I was talking to Cameron and we came up with the idea of doing a crossover where we each list our five favorite movie books. Not necessarily, it's a loose, kind of a loose. So it could be an adaptation, it could be behind the scenes book, something like that. Um, just to keep it loose and keep it fun. And you guys know that uh, favorites are hard for me to pin down. So if I were to do this video like two weeks from now, it would probably be, probably be different. But um, I'm going to list my five favorite books. And then you guys go check out Obnoxious and Anonymous. I'll put the links in the description of the video. Links in the description, pal. And uh, we will uh, we'll compare notes. I'm wondering if there's any crossover. I think most of mine are kind of obscure, but there's one that's kind of... A big favorite for a lot of people so just without getting too deep into the woods let's go ahead and jump right into it my first is uh it's probably no surprise it's the it's the novelization of robin hood prince of thieves this is the only adaptation the only novelization that i have on my list but uh i love this movie i think most of you guys watching this know that i love this movie i just recorded an audio commentary for the patreon community of this movie um, and uh, what I loved about this book is that uh, it was based on you know earlier versions of the screenplay than the finished edited film, and so there were lots of things in this book that did not make it to the finished Robin Hood Prince of Thieves film. Uh, some some of the deleted scenes are represented on the extended cut of the DVD, the Blu-ray. Uh, but uh, as as a fan of this movie in the early '90s when this came out, this was extra of the thing that I really loved and so uh, this will always hold a soft place in my heart special place in my heart um, this is the uh, I think this is a book club edition I had a paperback I think I, I still do have the paperback somewhere but this is a hardback version that I think was a book club exclusive and so uh, it's kind of a prized possession of mine next let's talk about the Elvis films FAQ um, Elvis's movies are a Oh, what's the word? They're, they can be daunting. They can be. First of all, Elvis's movies are kind of easily dismissed by a lot of people, which I think is unfair. Uh, but he did do almost three dozen of them, and a lot of them are very similar. And so a book like the Elvis Films FAQ is invaluable in helping us to separate what worked, what didn't work, why this came out this way, why this didn't necessarily come out this way. They talk to... I mean, they talk to so many people in this book. They have what Elvis thought about his movies. They have, uh, you know, an appreciation of the movies. They talk to the co-stars. Basically, it's an exhaustive look at the filmography of Elvis. And um, again, Elvis's movies do not get respect. That's a theme that's going to pop up later in this video is films that don't get respect, but maybe should. Maybe you're worth a second look. So uh, Elvis films... FAQ. There's also an Elvis Music FAQ, which I highly recommend. The entire FAQ book series, they're not FAQs. The, the title, I think they're trying to cash in on the FAQ, what, the movement? Was there an FAQ movement? No. Uh, they're trying to cash in on like accessible, like, hey, you don't have to, probably like the idiot's guide or the complete, you know, the dummy's guide to whatever. Uh, they're trying to keep this um, non-scholarly, which is ironic because they actually do get very, very deep in some of these subjects. Easy Riders and Raging Bulls. I don't think there's an and. It's just Easy Riders, Raging Bulls. Now, a lot of you guys probably know uh, this documentary, which is the two-hour film version of Easy, Riser, Easy Riders, Raging Bulls. And um, if, if this is all you've seen, I highly recommend that you check out the book. This is the one that I think is going to be on a lot of people's list. This is one of those famous books about the 70s filmmaking scene, the shift away from the 50s and the 60s, the way movies had been made up to a certain point. And then you get the sex, drugs, and rock and roll generation involved, your Dennis Hoppers, your Francis Coppola's, your William Friedkin's, all those guys, those young hot shots post-Vietnam, or in the middle of Vietnam, actually. Uh, I'm just going to read you some of the quotes from the back of this book from the people. Martin Scorsese on drugs. Uh, it was a matter of push... Should I do it like Martin Scorsese? It was a matter of pushing the envelope, uh, of being bad. I did a lot of drugs because I wanted to do a lot. I wanted to push all the way to the very, very end and see if I could die. 
That's Martin Scorsese on doing drugs in the 70s. Um, Billy Friedkin, William Friedkin on uh, Star Wars. It was like when McDonald's got a foothold, the taste for good food just disappeared. We entered a period of devolution. Everything had gone backward toward this big sucking hole. George Lucas on Star Wars. Popcorn pictures, uh, uh, popcorn pictures have always ruled. Why do, why do people go see them? Why is the public so stupid? It's not my fault. That's George Lucas on Star Wars. Fascinating. Spielberg, uh, Dennis Hopper's in here. Um, Don Simpson, Robert Altman. It's very clear. A lot of these people, there were loyalties, backstabs, betrayals. The story of 70s filmmaking is absolutely fascinating. This is a great one. Um, and uh, again, if you've only seen the two-hour uh, documentary adaptation of this, I highly recommend the book because there's so much more. Uh, you can only imagine, right? Like this thing is hundreds and hundreds of pages. How many pages does this thing clock in at? Almost 500 pages of, uh, of stories from what we're talking about. It's crazy. Um, this. Guys, we got to talk about this. I actually just bought this and it quickly just shot up to the top of my list or near the top of my list. This is called Heroes Never Die. Uh, the Italian Peplum Phenomenon, 1950 to 1967. I cannot think of any genre of film that is so dis dismissed as, as Peplum, as the Italian 60s, late 50s, early to mid 60s uh, sword and sandal movies. Not sword and sorcery, but the, the sword and sandal movies. The Hercules movies with Steve Reeves, uh, the Machiste movies, all that stuff. Uh, they are, every film genre seems to have its fans, horror fans, mystery fans, film noir fans, uh, adventure movie fans, like you can find silent movie fans. You can find defenses for all of these things, but not Peplum. Peplum is the redheaded stepchild of film history. And this guy, uh, Barry Atkinson, um, he's a UK based author and he has, guys, this is exhaustive. This is an incredible thoroughly researched overview of the peplum phenomenon where it came from how many of these directors sergio leone mario bava all these guys came out of this movement and then transitioned into the spaghetti western movement because uh, it was the same the same region of the world you know it's that italian area spain filming in spain things like that and how they went straight from uh copying and homaging biblical epics and the Hollywood epic of the 50s. They, they did their own version of that. Um, high concept, high violence, lots of skin. And then they immediately transitioned into that straight into the Spaghetti Western. And then from the Spaghetti Western into the Euro crime, the Euro horror, things like that. It's a through line all the way through cinema. And again, Spaghetti Westerns, Euro crime, Euro horror, all those genres have fans that are like a deep fandom. But not the movies, not the movies that started at all, which is so interesting. So I highly recommend this book. I'll be talking about that more on the channel because I have so much to say. Uh, and then the last, uh, I, I guess this is my number one. I didn't really rank these, but I suppose this is my number one. Uh, Disney Animation, The Illusion of Life. Now this was my. I've had this copy for years. I bought this when I was a child. This is by Frank, uh, Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnson, the legendary. Disney animators, right? And so this is um, primarily focused on how Walt's nine old men, Walt Disney's nine old men, created the feature animation that they did. It's not, it doesn't necessarily say feature film animation, and then we're talking movie books. This really is um, the movie department of the animation. Snow White, Pinocchio, the, the legendary historical Disney animated features. Uh, and I have loved this book for decades now. I bought this when I was very young. Uh, I think this is a first printing, but I could be wrong. Um, this is uh, this is copyright 1984, so maybe this is a. It was reprinted in '88, I believe, and there's been some subsequent changes over the years. I think some edit, some some revisions, maybe. Uh, but I think the earlier editions are coveted for their, um, for their their lavish photography, the page qual the, the the print quality of the paper and everything, uh, and it really breaks down what makes Disney animation so special. This book is still in print in a you know modern version, but uh, this is literally my childhood copy. I've had this book for at least 30 years. So uh, I'm gonna finish it with that one, but that's, those are my, let's say those are five of my favorite movie related books. So what are your, some of your favorite movie related books? And now head over to Obnoxious and Anonymous and check out Cameron's five 
favorite movie books. Uh, guys, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for if, if you're new to this channel, if you're coming from Cameron's video, hey, uh, it's nice to have you here. Check out some of our other videos and see what you think about it. Like it and subscribe it and all that good stuff. And if you guys headed over to Cameron's site, like him and subscribe to him as well. Uh, let's see if we can all uh, rise the tide and lift the ships. That sounded very motivational. Guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you. And I will catch you later.